All right, can you believe it? I'm pulling out this perfectly good 5.3 to stab in this 302. Let that sink in for a second. Because I'm totally lying. This is never going to happen. Never, ever, 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 ever. <laughs> All right, so anyways, pulled the heads off this thing real quick. The stupid video I was taking for a time lapse quit because I ran out of space on my phone, but whatever. Um, so, the reason we're pulling the heads off. Uh, these heads are getting bigger valves. Uh, they're Ferrera. I don't even remember what size they were. They are pre-owned. Uh, springs. Don't know what brand they are. I know the seat pressures. They're a little bit bigger diameter. They are three springs. Obviously, there's you know a couple dampers. Um, they were bought as a package deal years ago. Finally going to use them. Also, I have push rods. My rocker arms, I'm sure, are just fine. I'll clean them up, check them out. Lifters, I'm going to change the lifters out. Cylinder rolls on this thing, so far that I've looked at, are fine, but I need to get the water out of them and look them over real good. I'm sure they're fine. This engine, uh, whenever you are running it hard on the street, and I only did it a few times, but I'm talking 20 plus PSI, it started to push water a little bit. N not bad, but some. And this is if nobody knows or if you're just now following along this is a 200 oh now it's over over 250,000 mile 5.3 came out of a 99 silverado i had to clean a whole bunch of sand dirt and everything off the top of the engine vacuumed it off this thing come from a truck that was pushing sprint cars around at a dirt track they said it was out running the sprint cars so they had to get rid of it it's making them look bad so Anyways, I got this in the car. I've been running the dog crap out of it. And then it started uh, pushing water a little bit. Not even enough to be real concerned with. But I knew that obviously it was going to follow up to be a bigger issue later down the road. Uh, it's going to get probably the LS9 head gaskets. I'm guessing. I don't even know. I thought about doing going back to a graphite gasket and then do a... Uh, an o-ring on the head um, I will let someone else figure that out for me probably go ahead and do the ARP head studs I'm not doing that Chinese nonsense everybody else does I'm not as sheepish as everyone thinks um, so I pulled these heads off I got to look at the gaskets and I was actually really impressed I thought they'd be in way worse shape but they're not. I found one place where it looked like water might have been leaking a little bit. Or really not even water. Um, exhaust leaking into a coolant passage. Obviously pressurizing the cooling system, pushing water out of it. And I'm not even totally convinced that I found the spot. But it's, there's only one spot on that head gasket that looks like it might have been. And you can see the head gaskets, but one of them, and I don't even remember where it was at now one spot looked like it could have been leaking um for the most part this graph this gasket looks decent for the amount of miles that are on it and it, it shows no sign of um, detonation as far as the firing goes they're not split they're not rippled i haven't checked the thickness of this head gasket the actual crush thickness I am pretty curious on that, but factory head bolts, factory gaskets, I'm actually really impressed. Now, most of you will say, and you will be right, that the factory head gaskets were MLS. Uh, yes, I believe they were after a certain point. I don't think the earliest engines were MLS. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. I hope you do. But the 
earliest engines, I believe, still had a graphite gasket on them. I think the LQ4 from a 99 or 2000 was the same deal. I had an LQ4, one of the first ones, and it was the same same gasket. Or graphite, I'm sorry. Not the same gasket. Uh, so, obviously the front accessory still need to come off. It's going to get a cam. And I will be calling Comp or Brian Tooley on that. The wiring, what a mess. I mean, it's not a mess. It's factory wiring. And the reason I set it up the way I did was to show people that you can wire this thing up with the factory fuse block and take very minimal amount of wiring. And I've got a video on it, on exactly what I did, but... Was it this one? No. Which one is it? One of these connectors. Yeah, okay. So this is the connector that runs back to the car. Here you can see my wiring. These wires don't get used. These, I don't know, five, five wires here go into the car. Uh, these two go into the factory fuse block and I just tied those into something. I don't know what I did there. A couple other wires here that get used. They stay in the factory fuse block connectors. Very little wiring. Very, very little wiring. Cost virtually nothing. Uh, I don't have any money in that wiring harness whatsoever. Came out of the truck, paid $400 for the whole truck. I drove the truck, did burnouts in the truck, or tried, attempted. Transmission was out of it, so. Uh, I would like to fix the wiring to where the engine is easier to disassemble. So, um, I guess I should go on to say that this engine may or may not be going back into this car for next year. Uh, the opportunity has rolled around to where uh, there's another engine lined up to sit in this car and it would drop right in. It's way more power and I'm not 100% sure what all is gonna be involved. I hope it's very little. I'll have to build a wiring harness for it. I don't wanna say what it is yet. Uh, <laughs> but you, you will probably do a double take when you figure when you find out what it is but we'll i'll wait until we get farther along here to make that decision i am going to go ahead and get this engine back together um i do have a, a stroker crank and rods and uh, i need pistons a set of pistons for uh let's see what would it be i'd end up building a 383 ls uh four inch stroke crank six one twenty five rods i think they are i don't remember they're just it's a popular size anyways i've got that stuff sitting on a shelf to maybe build one i don't know i don't know if it's going to happen this winter or not i was hoping it would but but then again i really wanted to see what this thing would do once it had a good cam in it and it would probably be the cheaper route i don't know i don't know I'm indecisive. Anyways, here's all my junk. Come off the car. So these heads will get out of here. Um, for anybody interested in what radiator I use, this is, if you've not ever seen the cooling system video, this is the LT1 radiator. Uh, the I'm talking the second gen LT1 from uh, 93 to 96 Camaro, Firebird, Trans Am, Z28, whatever. Here's why I like using this radiator. For one, it's about twice the thickness as the LS1 radiator, same dimensions, and has an awesome fan package that just slips right over it. It's a really good radiator. However, the necks are not ideal as far as the truck engine, you got this one long hose that runs from one side to the other, and that's gear and aids. But as far as keeping a car cool, never had a problem. I mean, it's awesome.
Now, I did overheat this thing here a while back, but I don't remember. Oh, it was a water pump. I had a water pump go bad. Two water pumps go bad. Uh, I usually save the, the water pumps. I've got them laying around. Uh, took one, uh, the bad one off, put another one on. It leaked. Took it off, put the third one on, and it was in good shape. So, all right, enough of me rattling my trap. So, all right. Got any questions, comments? Let me know. I'll try to, if I don't know, I'll make something up. How's that? Have a good one.